Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is May 4th, 2021 and it's the birth anniversary of a woman who I would describe as South Africa's equivalent, so to speak, of the great American anti-slavery abolitionist John Brown. Before we get started, I want to say Ramadan Mubarak to all of my Muslim brothers and sisters around the world who are observing the fast during this blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your fast, reward your good deeds, and wipe away your misdeeds, inshallah. Now, if you are new to this channel, we implore you to hit that subscribe button just below the screen and join us on this journey of producing these daily lessons. And I thank you in advance. Right? Today, Let's take a look at a woman who spent most of her life fighting against the brutal apartheid system that ruled South Africa during most of the 20th century. In fact, she gave her life in the fight for justice and equality. Eloise Ruth First was the daughter of Latvian Jewish immigrants Julius and Matilda First, who were founding members of the Communist Party of South Africa, or the CPSA. Miss First herself would also become active in the party as she grew older. In 1946, she received a bachelor's degree in social studies from the University of Witwatersrand. Now, while there, she organized the Federation of Progressive Students with Ishmael Mir, Joe Slova, who she would later marry, Yusuf Dadu, J.N. Singh, and others, creating a radical multiracial student organization that opposed apartheid. From 1947, Miss First worked for the progressive newspaper, The Guardian, specializing in exposés of black labor conditions. In 1949, she married Joe Slover, and by 1954, they had three daughters. Now, after the CPSA was banned, which was an anti-apartheid era legal action that was used to suppress organizations and publications and severely restrict the activities of a person by the South African government in 1950, Miss First was involved in organizing its successor, the Underground South African Communist Party, or SACP, which emerged in 1953. That same year, she was also involved in the founding of the Congress of Democrats, the white wing, I did say, the white wing of the Congress Alliance, a multiracial group of organizations that opposed apartheid. She edited the journal Fight and Talk, which supported the alliance. Miss First also worked on drafting the Alliance's renowned Freedom Charter, which called for the non-racial social democracy in South Africa, but she was unable to attend the Congress of the People Gathering held in 1955, where the document was approved because of her banning order, which was one of several such orders Miss First was subject to while living in South Africa. In 1956, Miss First and her husband, along with Albert Luthuli, Nelson Mandela, and more than 100 other anti-apartheid leaders were defendants in a treason trial that lasted more than four years. By the end of the trial, all defendants had been acquitted, although many, including Ms. First, were subject to new banning orders. In the state of emergency declared after the Sharpsville Massacre in 1960, and the subsequent banning of the African National Congress, or the ANC, Miss First fled to Swaziland with her children, returning six months later when the state of emergency was lifted. In 1963, she was detained following the arrest in Ravonia of the leaders of the underground ANC, SACP, and the Umkuntu we Siswe, which translates in English to the Spear of the Nation and was the military wing of the ANC. Now, she was not accused with them, but was detained under the 90-day clause, during which time she attempted suicide. But after being released, Miss First left South Africa with her daughters in March of 1964 and joined her husband, Joe Slovo, in London. In exile, Miss First worked actively in the anti-apartheid movement and did research and university lecturing. She wrote 117 Days, an account of confinement and interrogation, under the South African 90-day detention law. She did that in 1965, and that was about her own detention, and numerous other books, including Southwest Africa in 1963, 
Power in Africa, 1970, and Olive Schreiner, which she wrote with Anne Scott in 1980. She also researched and edited books by well-known African nationalists like Govan Mbeki's South Africa, The Peasants' Revolt, which was done in 1964, Nelson Mandela's No Easy Walk to Freedom in 1965, and Ogingo Odinga's Not Yet Uhuru in 1967. In 1977, Ms. First was appointed research director of the Center for African Studies at the Eduardo Mondlane University in Maputo, Mozambique where she continued her research on migrant labor. In 1982, she was assassinated at the center by a letter bomb sent by agents of South Africa's apartheid government. Presidents, members of parliament, and ambassadors from more than 30 countries attended her funeral in Maputo. Ruth Fur Slovo, like John Brown in the 1850s, put her life on the line towards the liberation of African people, and as such, deserve our acknowledgement and our thanks. A big shout out to all freedom fighters all around the world who are standing for justice. May Allah grant you success. Thank you to all of our subscribers. If you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button just below the screen and join us. Please like and leave a comment down in the comment section. But most importantly, please share, especially with the young amongst us. So, until tomorrow, inshallah, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalam.